In this video, we'll take one of our parts and review the steps required for prototyping. The goal here is to export the 3D Rhino data to a file format called STL, which stands for Stereolithography, which is the name of one type of prototyping machine. Also, you'll see the STL file format is a polygonal mesh. Let's zoom into this engine here we've already created. So the quick process would be just to select the object, go to File, Export Selected. But I've actually got an improved process and it requires one extra step before we go here and export. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna back up a bit. I'm gonna select this object. What we're gonna do is we're gonna convert it to a mesh inside of Rhino. That exporting I just showed you would have sent it out to another file and we would have a reduced opportunity to review it. We're gonna make sure there's no problems, which can sometimes happen, it's not that often. So let's go up to the mesh menu and we're just gonna make it from a NURBS object. Now just for illustration purposes, I'm gonna crank this way down to low. We can preview it, but a lot of times it's difficult to see what's going on because it's right on top of the NURBS object. We'll hit OK. What I usually like to do is move it away and then kind of check it out. And you can see it's kind of faceted. It's nowhere near as smooth as the NURBS surface. I'm also noticing some of these faces are very long and skinny, and so that's going to cause potential problems. So we'll solve that issue with our next export. So I'm just going to select it and delete it. I'm going to repeat this again. Go to Mesh from NURBS. I'm going to crank it up. Let's do another preview. So the question comes up, how much smoothness do I need? Well, if it turns perfectly black, that's too much. So you want to have a little bit of space inside here. I'm going to jump over to the detailed controls. And I'm going to address that issue with the long, skinny polygons. So that's controlled by aspect ratio. So if I type in 2, that's going to make the maximum 1 by 2. So if I do a quick preview, you can see there's more squares now. And that'll hopefully keep our shape a little bit smoother overall. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And we have to deselect and reselect to get the mesh. I'm going to move that out of the way so we can do a little inspection. That looks much smoother. If you want to get an even better idea, what I usually do is go over to a rendered view. And it almost looks exactly like a NURBS, even though it's a lots and lots of tiny polygons. So besides the visual inspection, we can also do our similar volume check. So I'm going to select this mesh. And analyze. Mass properties. Volume. And it's nice to see that it actually is still closed. That you can occasionally have a little glitch. If you do have a problem here, what I recommend is throwing away this mesh, going back to your model and fixing whatever you see. For example, it could be a face that's flipped around. So just throw that away with an extraction and rebuild it. Then try your mesh export one more time. You can also modify the mesh resolution. So crank it higher or lower. Sometimes that fixes it too. Okay, since this is past inspection, now we can go to the file export selected. I'm going to put this on the desktop, and we're going to look at all the different file formats Rhino can deal with, which is pretty amazing. But we're going to go to STL for now. I'm going to call this engine and save it. Let's go ahead and accept all the defaults by hitting OK. So that file is now outside, but it should be identical to what we've just previewed here. Let's go to the desktop and take a look. So here's the engine. Now, it's only one megabyte. Our Rhino file is many times bigger. What I recommend doing before you send this out is to zip it. It's going to actually get many times smaller again. And the reason is this STL data is actually just a series of points and lines, so it's very easy to compress. We'll send it to a zipped folder. Leave it the same name. Let's check that out. So you can see it got two-thirds smaller again. The reason I recommend zipping your data is to protect it when you send it via email. Okay, let's go back to Rhino. So the prototyping process is a fantastic way to study your design and see how well it works. It's especially useful when you can identify problems and fix them long before it gets manufactured, which would be very embarrassing and expensive. Fortunately, it has recently become possible and cost-effective for individuals to buy their very own 3D printer, and some models sell for under a thousand bucks.
Even if you don't have your own printer, you can still email the STL file we just made to a place called the Rapid Prototyping Service Bureau. They will print out your parts in just a few days, and most of them offer painting and assembly services as well. Nice!